What are formulas and equations in chemistry? Formulas and equations in chemistry don't always mean the same as in mathematics. Formulas in chemistry are representations of a chemical compound using Symbols for the elements and subscripts for the number of atoms present. For example, the chemical formula for water is H2O. In which there are two atoms of hydrogen, H, bonded to an atom of oxygen, O. The subscript 2 indicates that there are two atoms of hydrogen in the molecule. If there is no subscript number, as with the oxygen, O, a subscript of 1 is implied. Remember, not all compounds are molecular, for example, NaCl. Or sodium chloride regular table salt is called an ionic compound. In these cases, the formula shows the proportion of the atoms of each element making up the compound. There are other types of formulas in chemistry, but this is the most familiar. Equations in chemistry also differ from those in mathematics. Chemical equations represent the reaction relationship between two or more chemical compounds along with the products of the chemical reaction. For example, the chemical equation 2H2 plus O2 2H2O is the reaction of hydrogen with oxygen to form water. The arrow indicates the direction of the reaction toward the product. The reactants, or the substances that react, are hydrogen and oxygen. There is also a methodology in writing chemical equations. Simply put, first determine the reactants and outcome, next. Determine the formula for each substance, and finally, balance the equation. What are some of the statistics used in baseball? There are numerous statistics used in baseball, including batting and pitching statistics. Batting statistics can be divided into several numbers. The batting average, average, is the number of hits a player makes divided by the number of times at bat. It does not include walks or sacrifice hits. The runs batted in RBI, is the number of runners who scored on a player's hit. Base on balls, or sacrifice. The on-base plus sluggage, ops, is a good measure of a hitter's ability. This statistic combines getting on-base, on-base percentage, or OBP, and advancing runners, slugging percentage, or SLG. It is also more accurate thanks to the adjustment 1.2x OBP and SLG, which compensates for the fact that SLG has a wider range than OBP. Pitching statistics include the ERA and WHIP. The earned run average, ERA, is the earned runs times the innings in a game. Most commonly 9, divided by the innings pitched. The walks plus hits per inning pitched, whip. Records the bases on balls, walks, plus hits divided by innings pitched. It's a good way to measure the approximate number of walks. 
and hits a pitcher allows in each inning that he pitches. It then compares that amount to other pitchers to formulate a pitcher's index. Who built the first known adding machine? No one knows who built the first adding machine. Although many historians believe it was German mathematician Wilhelm Schickard. 1592-1635, who first invented a mechanical calculator in 1623 based on Napier's bones, see above. Schickard and his family perished from the bubonic plague. It was not until the mid-20th century that his notes and letters were discovered. They showed diagrams of how to construct his machine. Skickard apparently built two prototypes. One was destroyed in a fire and the other one's location is unknown, if it survived at all. His device, which he called the calculating clock was able to add and subtract up to six-digit numbers using a mechanism of gears and wheels. But not all historians credit Skickard. Some believe that there was an even earlier attempt at mechanical computing by Leonardo da Vinci, who also apparently designed an adding machine. Some of his notes were found in the National Museum of Spain in 1967 and Describe a machine bearing a certain resemblance to Pascal's machine, see below. How are millibars converted to inches of mercury? Mathematically, the conversion is simple. The air pressure at sea level is 29.92 inches of mercury, or 1013.2 millibars. For example, if you see air pressure of 1016 millibars on a weather map, convert to inches of mercury by multiplying by 29.92, and then divide by 1013.2. The result is 30.00 inches of mercury. Who was Kurt Gödel? For about a hundred years, mathematicians such as Bertrand Russell were trying to present axioms that would define the entire field of mathematics on an axiomatic basis. Austrian-American mathematician and logician Kurt Gödel 1906-1978, was the first to suggest that any formal system strong enough to include the laws of mathematics is either incomplete or inconsistent. This was called Gödel's incompleteness theorem. Thus, axioms could not define all of mathematics. Gödel also stated that the various branches of mathematics are based in part on propositions that are not provable within the system itself. Although they may be proved by means of logical, metamathematical, systems external to mathematics. In other words, nothing is as simple as it seems, and, interestingly enough, Gödel's idea also implies that a computer can never be programmed to answer all mathematical questions.
When did geometry originate? The field of geometry was probably developed by several cultures over millennia. But only in crude, elementary forms. Some of the first to actually work with geometry were the cultures of the Mesopotamian region around 3500 BCE, especially the Babylonians. They were the earliest peoples to know about what is now called the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, the Greek mathematician and philosopher Pythagoras of Samos c 582 c. 507 BCE may have actually learned about this theorem in his travels to the east. And they possessed all the theorems of plane geometry that the Greeks attributed to Thales. The Egyptians came next, using geometric methods mainly for construction of huge monuments. This included the sundry pyramids and monuments of the region. Some of which still dot the landscape today a tribute to their builders who used geometric techniques. What is chemistry? Chemistry is the science of matter. It studies the composition, structure, and properties of substances, matter, and its reactions and changes. Because chemistry includes all materials in the universe, it is useful for studying many things from the chemical composition of gases in galaxies to the chemical reactions within living cells. It also includes mathematics in many forms. Such as when determining chemical compositions and understanding relationships between certain chemicals. What is the Mozart effect? The Mozart effect is a term coined in the 1950s by physician and researcher Alfred A. Thomas, 1920-2001. It refers to the supposed increase in brain development that children under age 3 experience when they listen to music composed by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, 1756-1791. A more recent interpretation originated in 1993 from physicist Gordon Shaw and Francis Rauscher. A former concert cellist and expert on cognitive development. After a few dozen students listened to the first 10 minutes of Mozart's sonata for two pianos in D major, K. 448 the researchers determined that the students experienced a short-term enhancement of their spatial-temporal reasoning, based on a certain IQ test. But many other researchers claim that no one has ever been able to reproduce these results. Over the years, the Mozart effect has reached further into the public psyche. With highly debated claims of better health, memory improvement, and therapeutic uses of music, especially classical music. Proponents also claim the Mozart effect can be applied to learning such subjects as mathematics. They believe that exposure to certain types of music especially classical music early in life leads to higher future scores in spatial visualization, abstract reasoning, and sundry other mathematical concepts.
but all these claims remain highly contested. What is the difference in sum of cubes? Similar to squares, there is also the difference and sum of cubes that deals with the factoring of polynomials. The difference of cubes takes the form of 3b3, and can be factored into, a b, a 2 plus of and b2. Thus, if an expression resembles, a 3b3, then, a b is a factor, use long division to find the remaining factor, s. The sum of cubes takes the form of 3 plus b3, and can be factored into, a and b, a 2 of and b2. Thus, if an expression resembles, a 3 plus b3, then, a and b, is a factor. Again, Use long division to find the remaining factor, s. How are fractions converted to decimals and vice versa? In the most commonly used place value, the decimal system. Numbers smaller than 1 can be expressed as fractions called decimal fractions. In this system, the decimal fractions are expressed in terms of tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and so on. For example, for the fraction 1 half, or 1 divided by 2, the decimal fraction is 0.5, and, vice versa. The decimal fraction 0.5, or 5 slash 10 ths, is equal to 1 half. Not all fractions are so easily converted to decimals. It depends on the type of number, especially if it is an irrational or rational number. What is mathematical logic? Mathematical logic is not the logic of mathematics, but is really the mathematics of logic composed of those parts of logic that can be modeled mathematically. Overall, it was invented to understand and present the work of Austrian-American mathematician and logician Kurt Gödel. 1906-1978 and his interpretation of the foundations of mathematics in the early 20th century. Although mathematicians use mathematical logic to have rational and reasonable discussions. Of the many issues in the foundations of mathematics, not everything is agreed upon. What was de revolutionibus orbium coelesium? In the year of his death, astronomer Nicolaus Copernicus, 1473-1543, in Polish, Myko slash Lodz Kopernik. Published de revolutionibus orbium coelesium, on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres. This manuscript gave a full account of his theory that the sun and not the earth was at the center of the solar system or universe. Although this theory was not new, Copernicus offered the idea in all its mathematical detail. This heliocentric 
versus geocentric, view of the heavens. Now known as the Copernican system, is the foundation of modern astronomy. When was mathematics first used to predict the weather? One of the first people to use mathematics to predict the weather was English meteorologist Lewis Fry Richardson, 1881 to 1953. In 1922 he proposed the use of differential equations to forecast the weather. An idea published in his book Weather Prediction by Numerical Process. He believed that observations from weather stations would provide data for the initial conditions. From that information, predictions of the weather could be made for several days ahead. But Richardson's methods were extremely tedious and time-consuming. Mainly because they had to be done by hand in the pre-computer age. Thus, most of his calculations came too late to be of any predictive value. Richardson determined that 60. 000 people would have to do the calculations in order to predict the next day's weather. But his ideas did lay the foundation for modern weather forecasting. Why has the combination of mathematical analysis methods and computers been so important? The combination of mathematical analysis and computers has been a strong alliance. Especially with regard to engineering, technology, and the sciences. In the past few decades, researchers have used this combination to help predict the weather. Describe in great detail nuclear fusion in the sun, understand the movement of space bodies around the solar system orbital mechanics, and the flow of water in underground aquifers, fluid dynamics. There are also the studies of chaos the unpredictable behavior of nonlinear systems and quantum mechanics. Or the physics of very small particles, both of which entail the use of applied mathematics and computers. In addition, in engineering, and almost all technology. The mathematical analysis computer combination has helped create structures that surround us every day. This includes familiar modes of transportation and communication from plans for airplanes and bridge construction to designing fiber optic cables and cell phone towers. It also includes how engineers design control systems which are used in such diverse areas as robotics, aerospace engineering, and biomedical research. A first-order differential equation takes the form, what is an example of a differential equation? An example of a differential equation involves letting y be some function of the independent variable t. Why are arcs and angles important to circles? Everything starts with the angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. 
logically called the central angle of a circle. All the central angles of a circle add up to 360 degrees. Every central angle cuts the circle into two arcs, the minor arc. Always less than 180 degrees, and the major arc, always more than 180 degrees. Thus, the measure of the minor arc is actually the measurement of the central angle. While the measurement of the major arc is 360 degrees minus the measure of the central angle. An arc length is the distance between an arc's endpoints along the path of the circle. Congruent arcs are arcs with the same measurements. When the diameter of a circle separates the circle into two congruent arcs it is called a semicircle. How do engineers determine the escape velocity of a rocket? A ball thrown into the air will rise and then return, thanks to the Earth's gravity. If the ball is given a larger initial velocity, it will rise even higher and then return. With even more velocity, the ball will reach a certain escape velocity. In which the ball escapes the gravitational pull of the planet. If the ball is launched with an initial velocity greater than the escape velocity. It will rise and not return. In this case, physicists say that the ball was given enough kinetic energy to overcome all of the negative gravitational potential energy or, it launches into space. Thus, if m is the mass of the ball, m is the mass of the earth, g is the gravitational constant, v is the velocity, and r is the radius of the earth, then the potential energy is equal to gmm slash r. The kinetic energy of the launched ball is equal to mv2 slash 2. This is independent of the mass of the ball. To see how this works to an aerospace engineer, just replace the word ball with space vehicle. What are the ways credit card companies calculate finance charges? When the credit card issuer calculates the finance charge on a card, it applies a periodic rate to a balance. In order to calculate that balance, the company uses various methods. The most common is the average daily balance method, in which the balance is calculated by taking the amount of debt in the account each day during a specific period and averaging it. The previous balance method uses the outstanding balance at the end of the period to compute the finance charges. The adjusted balance method derives the balance by subtracting any payments made during the cycle from the previous balance, with new purchases not being counted. What is the most famous Chinese mathematics book? The Zhuang Suanchu, or Nine Chapters on the Mathematical Art, is the most famous mathematical book to come out of ancient China. 
This book dominated mathematical development for more than 1,500 years. With contributions by numerous Chinese scholars such as Su Yu, C160 C227, though his contributions were lost. It contains 246 problems. Meant to provide methods to solve everyday questions concerning engineering, trade, taxation, and surveying. Can we change the calendars now in use? The present calendar is an annual one and changes every year much to the happiness of calendar publishers. This is because 365 days in a year is not evenly divisible by the number of days in the week. 365-7 equals 52, with the remainder of 1, or 52.142857. This means that a given year usually begins and ends on the same weekday, and it also means that the next year bumps January 1st, and all following dates to the next weekday, and a new calendar is born each year. But because the calendar we now have is so ingrained in everything we do, it is doubtful that there will be any changes soon. Not that there haven't been suggestions. One is called the World, or World's Day, calendar, in which each date would always fall on the same day of the week. And all the holidays occur on the same day of the year. With this calendar, each year begins on Sunday, January 1st, and each working year begins on Monday. January 2nd. The reason why the calendar is called perpetual or perennial is that the year ends with a 365th day following December 30th, which is marked with a W for World's Day, our current December 31. Leap year days would still have to be added, such as at the end of June, some suggest a June 31 be added. Both extra days could act as world holidays. What is an example of the second derivative? He second derivative is actually a function's derivative's derivative. In other words, the function's derivative may also have its own derivative. Called the second derivative or second order derivative. If we let y equals f, x, the second derivative becomes d slash dx, dy slash dx. This is equal to d2y slash dx2, further represented by the symbols f, x, or y. One good example of a second order derivative is acceleration. It is actually the second derivative of a change in distance. In other words, the first derivative gives instantaneous velocity. See above, while the second derivative gives acceleration. This equation is also seen written as dn, y equals dny slash dxn. Why do so many philosophers study the foundations of mathematics? There are three underlying reasons why philosophers often study the foundations of mathematics. First, 
these foundations have always been a part of scientific thought. With the abstract nature of mathematical objects offering unusual and often unique philosophical quandaries. Second, the subject offers a high level of technical sophistication. Allowing philosophers to develop connections between models and patterns, laying the groundwork for many other sciences. And finally, the foundations of mathematics provides ways for philosophers and mathematicians to try out general philosophical doctrines in a specific scientific context. How is mathematics used to enable buildings to withstand earthquakes? It is not usually the quake that kills people, but the collapse of structures. In particular, the horizontal shaking during a quake is mostly responsible for causing building or road damage and collapse. Most structures are designed to carry heavy loads, so they are strong in the vertical direction. Designing structures to withstand a horizontal earthquake shaking can save buildings and lives. There may be other ways to mitigate the amount of structural collapse. During quakes all include a healthy dose of simple and complex mathematics. One expensive way would be to design all buildings to withstand the largest ground shaking an area can expect. This could be done using mathematics familiar to designers and engineers. The math involved analyzes how large quake frequency waves travel through an area. Yet another, more practical, solution might be to design buildings. To withstand the specific types of shaking expected in a region. Again, mathematics could be used to determine the frequency at which each building vibrates. Or the number of times a building sways per second, versus the potential type of quakes that roll through the area. How are some symbols used in operations on sets? There are many ways to operate on sets. The following lists some of the more simple operations on sets, where E, F, and G are sets. ENF equals FNEEUF equals FUE, in which both are commutative operations, ENF, and G equals EN. FNG, EUF, UG equals EU, FUG, in which both are associative operations, ENF, UG equals EUG, N, FUG, EUF, NG equals ENG, U, FNG, in which both are distributive operations. What is environmental modeling? As with most of the sciences, mathematical modeling and computer simulations also come in handy for environmental applications on a local, regional, and global scale. For example, scientists model environmental landscape changes, global climate change and the impacts on ecosystems. Watershed and reservoir interactions, and forest management and sustainability.
What did Blaise Pascal invent that eventually caused his interest in math to wane? French mathematician and philosopher Blaise Pascal 1623-1662, devised the Pascaline in 1642, when he was only 18 years old, he had it built by 1643. This device was possibly the first mechanical adding machine used for a practical purpose. He built it with his father, a tax collector in mind to help him with the tedious task of adding and subtracting large sequences of numbers but the device was not very helpful for a variety of reasons especially since it used base 10 and did not match up with divisions of the French currency other reasons for its rejection are familiar to every century the device was much too expensive and unreliable, along with being too difficult to use and manufacture. Eventually, Pascal's interest in science and mathematics waned. In 1655 he entered a Jansensist convent, studying philosophy until his death. Who is Benoit Mandelbrot? Benoit B. Mandelbro, 1924, is the Polish-born, French mathematician who invented a branch of mathematics called fractal geometry which is designed to find order in apparently erratic shapes and processes. A largely self-taught mathematician who did not like pure logical analysis. He was a pioneer of chaos theory, developing and finding applications for fractal geometry. Unlike traditional geometry with its regular shapes and whole number dimensions, Fractal geometry uses shapes found in nature with non-integer, or fractal thus the name, dimensions. For example, twigs, tree branches, river systems, and shorelines can be examined using fractals. Today, fractals are often applied not only to the natural world but also to the chemical industry. Computer graphics, and even the stock market. What is the Fibonacci sequence? Italian mathematician Leonardo of Pisa, c. 1170 c. 1250, also known as Fibonacci, or son of Bonaxi, although some Historians say there is no evidence that he or his contemporaries ever used the name. May be known for helping to introduce Hindu-Arabic numerals to Europe, cp. 70, but he also is famous for the sequence of numbers he discovered. This sequence initially pursued as an exercise to determine how fast a pair of rabbits can reproduce poor. Year is formed by adding the two preceding numbers to find the next number, starting with a pair of ones. Thus, the Fibonacci numbers in the sequence are 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233, 377, and so on.
or 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 1 equals 3, 3 plus 2 equals 5, 5 plus 3 equals 8, 8 plus 5 equals 13, 13 plus 8 equals 21, 21 plus 13 equals 34, 34 plus 21 equals 55, 55 plus 34 equals 89, 89 plus 55 equals 144, 144 plus 89 equals 233, 233 plus 144 equals 377, and so on. How do modern cash registers automatically know how much an item costs? Modern cash registers are actually computers that are able to read. A code consisting of a series of vertical bars varying in width. These are called barcodes, or barcode and represent numbers and other symbols. The barcode is scanned by a laser beam that is sensitive to the reflections from the line along with space thickness and variation. The reader translates the reflected light into digital data that is transferred to a computer for immediate action or storage usually both resulting in the addition of items purchased and an immediate inventory for the store. For more information about computers, see Math in Computing. But barcodes aren't only for stores. They are also used to check out books from the library, identify hospital patients, and track manufacturing and shipping movements. There are even very small barcodes used in scientific research. For example, to tag and keep track of honeybees. How are absolute and relative humidity determined? Like many other facets of meteorology, mathematics comes in handy when determining absolute and relative humidities. The absolute humidity is the mass of water vapor divided by the mass of dry air in a specific volume of air at a specific temperature. In this instance, the warmer the air, the more water vapor it contains. On the other hand, relative humidity, RH, is the ratio of the absolute humidity to the highest possible absolute humidity, which in turn depends on the current air temperature. Mathematically, RH is often defined as the ratio of the water vapor density, mass per unit volume, to the saturation water vapor density, usually expressed as a percent. The equation for relative humidity is RH equals actual water vapor density slash vapor saturation density x 100%. More commonly, RH is thought of as the amount of water vapor in the air at a given temperature in comparison to the amount that the air could contain at the same temperature. For example, if an area is experiencing 100% relative humidity, that usually means the air is saturated with, can't hold any more, water vapor. How is the area determined for some common two-dimensional polygons?
Finding the areas of polygons is not as simple as determining the areas of a rectangle and square. In order to find the area of certain polygons, one essentially breaks the shape down into smaller shapes with simpler formulas, these types of shapes are called composites. The formulas for many of these polygons are all adaptations. From the rectangle area formula or height, H, times base, B. For example, a triangle is actually exactly half of a rectangle. Thus, the formula to find the area of a triangle is half the base times the height, 1 slash 2 bh. In the case of the trapezoid, the figure can be divided into triangular sections. With the area equal to 1 half times the two bases times the height, or 1 slash 2, b and b, h. The triangle formula also is used to find other regular polygon areas, but they are less obvious. For a regular polygon, a feature called the apothem is necessary for finding the area. This is the height of one of the congruent triangles inside the regular polygon. In general, to find the polygon's area. You need to find the area of one triangle and multiply it times the number of sides. For example, to find the area of a hexagon, divide the figure into six triangles. Each with L equal to the height of each interior triangle or apothem. L is also half of the smallest interior dimension of the hexagon, called W. Thus, the area of a hexagon is the square root of 3 divided by 2 times w squared, or v3 slash 2xw2. There is still another way to determine the area of a polygon by using the Pythagorean theorem. A method that uses length and height, with the resulting formula for the area of a polygon looking much different. Both methods give the same results in numerical terms. For example, the area of a hexagon using the smallest interior dimension would be 0.866 times the square of the smallest width, W. The area of a regular hexagon using the Pythagorean theorem is 2.598 times the square of its side length. These may be different ways of presenting the solution, but both give the same correct area measurements. What is Pascal's triangle? Pascal's triangle as the name implies, is a collection of numbers in the shape of a triangle. Each number in the triangle is the sum of the two directly above. For example, in the accompanying illustration, the 6 on line 5 is the sum of the pair of 3's above. The next line is 1, 10, 1 plus 9, 45, 9 plus 36, 120, 36 plus 84, and so on. Although the triangle was known to both the Chinese and the Arab cultures for several hundred years before, it was named after the person who brought it to the forefront of mathematics. French mathematician Blaise Pascal, 1623 to 1662. For more information about Pascal, see History of Mathematics. What is the connection between calendars and math?
A calendar is essentially a numbering system that represents a systematic way of organizing days into weeks. Months, years, and millennia, especially in terms of a human lifespan. It was the necessity to count, keep track of, and organize days, months, and so on that gave rise to calendars. All of which also entails the knowledge of mathematics to make such calculations. Who developed the first ideas on symbolic logic? English mathematician George Boole, 1815-1864, was the first to develop ideas on symbolic logic. That is, the use of symbols to represent logical principles. He proposed this in his treatise, An Investigation of the Laws of Thought, on which are founded the mathematical theories of logic and probabilities, 1854. Today, this is called Boolean algebra. For more information about Bool, see algebra. For more information about symbolic logic, see foundations of mathematics. What is Zermelo's axiom of choice? Talk it sounds like something on a Greek restaurant menu. Zermelo's axiom of choice is actually a fundamental axiom in set theory. It states that given any set of mutually exclusive non empty sets, there is at least one set that contains exactly one element in common with each of the non-empty sets. This was actually one of David Hilbert's problems that needed to be solved by mathematicians of his day. For more about David Hilbert, see earlier in this chapter, and in History of Mathematics. German mathematician Ernst Friedrich Ferdinand Zermelo, 1871 to 1953 took on the task and in 1904 he developed what is called the well ordering theorem which says every set can be well ordered based on the axiom of choice this brought fame to zermelo but it was not accepted by all mathematicians who balked at the lack of axiomatization of set theory, for more about axiomatic set theory, see above. Although he finally did axiomatize set theory and improve on his theorem, there were still gaps in his logic, especially since he failed to prove the consistency in his axiomatic system. By 1923, German mathematician Adolf Abraham Halevi Frankel, 1891-1965, and Norwegian mathematician Albert Thorolf Skolem, 1887-1963, independently improved Zermelo's axiomatic system, resulting in the system now called Zermelo-Frankel axioms, Skolem's name was not included, although another theorem is named after him. This is now the most commonly used system for axiomatic set theory. What is currently the most common numeration system? The most common numeration system in use today is the Hindu-Arabic. 
This set of numerals has 10 digits in a place value decimal system. Which is a fancy way of saying that a decimal system 1 based on 10s is an integral part of the system. And that each number has a certain value depending on its place in the list of numbers. The following lists some of them, based on their number of sides, what are the platonic solids? Platonic solids are also called regular solids, regular figures. A term also used in reference to polygons, regular polyhedra, or cosmic figures. These solids are convex polyhedra that have equal faces made up of congruent convex regular polygons. To compare in terms of a two-dimensional polygon. A regular figure means that both the sides and the angles between them are equal. There are considered to only be five of these solids. The cube, dodecahedron, icosahedron, octahedron, and tetrahedron. These solids were described by Greek philosopher Plato, c. 428 to 348 BCE, in his work Timaeus, thus the name Platonic solids. His definitions were certainly more whimsical than today's. As he believed the major elements were made up of atoms shaped like certain polyhedra. He associated the tetrahedron with the element fire, the cube with the earth. The icosahedron with water, the octahedron with air. And the dodecahedron with the material that makes up the constellations and heavens. The mathematical proofs of these solids were worked out long ago by Greek mathematician and geometrician Euclid. C325 C270 BCE, in the last part of his Elements, for more information about Euclid. See elsewhere in this chapter, as well as Foundations of Mathematics. What were Pythagoras's other contributions? It is interesting that the Pythagorean theorem was not Pythagoras's only contribution. He is considered the first pure mathematician. He also founded a school that stressed a fourfold division of knowledge, including number theory. Deemed the most important of the pursuits at the school and using only the natural numbers. Music, geometry, and astronomy, these subjects were called the quadrivium in the Middle Ages. Along with logic, grammar, and rhetoric. These studies collectively formed what was deemed the essential areas of knowledge for any well-rounded person. Pythagoras not only taught these subjects, but also reincarnation and mysticism. Establishing an order similar to, or perhaps influenced by, the earlier Orphic cult. The true lives of Pythagoras and his followers, who worshipped Pythagoras as a demigod, are a bit of a mystery. As they followed a strict code of secrecy and regarded their mathematical studies as something of a black art. The fundamental belief of the Pythagoreans was that all is number. Or that the entire universe even abstract ethical concepts such as justice could be explained in terms of numbers. But they also had some interesting non-mathematical beliefs, 
including an aversion to beans. Although the Pythagoreans were influential in the fields of mathematics and geometry, they also made important contributions to astronomy and medicine and were the first to teach that the Earth revolved around a fixed point, the Sun. This idea would be popularized centuries later by Polish astronomer Nicolaus Copernicus, 1473-1543. By the end of the 5th century BCE, the Pythagoreans had become social outcasts. Many of them were killed as people grew angry at the group's interference with traditional religious customs. What is gambling? Gambling is the act of playing a game for stakes it is thought of as the art of taking chances. It is also often called betting. A bet is the amount of money or other object of value that is risked in a wager. Most people gamble with the hope of winning a certain stake, usually a cash payment. But in order to get such a payoff, the gambler must risk money or valuables. Betting these items on the outcome of a game, contest, or other event. All of this depends on the outcome of activities that are partially or wholly dependent upon chance. What is modus ponens? He Latin term modus ponens means mode that affirms. Or in the case of logic, stands for the rule of detachment. This rule, also known as a rule of inference, pertains to the if, then statement and forms the basis of most proofs. If P then Q, or if P is true, then the conclusion Q is true. It is often seen as the following, if P, then Q P. Therefore, Q. To see this another way. P and Q, if it is raining, then there are clouds in the sky P, it is raining Q. There are clouds in the sky. There are several ways to break down the modus ponens. The argument form has two premises, the if-then, or conditional claim. Or namely that P implies Q, and that P, called the antecedent of the conditional claim, is true. From these two premises it can be logically concluded that Q called the consequent of the conditional claim, must be true as well, in other words. If the antecedent of a conditional is true, then the consequent must be true. What is the Hubble constant? Astronomers have always been interested in the age of our universe and the speed of various objects in space. The Hubble constant was devised by American astronomer Edwin Hubble, 1889-1953. It is the ratio of the recessional speed of a galaxy because the universe is expanding to its distance from the observer. In other words, the velocity at which a typical galaxy is receding from Earth divided by its distance from Earth. 
the reciprocal of the Hubble constant is then thought to be the age of the universe. Usually written in terms of kilometers per second per million light years. If the number is high, the universe would be very young. If the number is low, the universe would be much more ancient. Although there have been numerous theories. The true age of the universe is usually considered to be somewhere between 12 and 20 billion years old. The most recent agreed upon rate at which the universe is expanding is. Approximately 20 kilometers per second per 106 light years of distance. That makes the universe about 15 billion years old. What are left and right limits? When a function is not defined around the point C, see the notation in the equation above. But only to the left or right of point C, then the limits are called the left limit and right limit at C. What are the atomic number and mass of an element? The atomic number is the number of protons in an atomic nucleus. The atomic mass of an atom usually measured in atomic mass units is the total mass of the atom. Or the combined mass of its protons and neutrons, the mass of the electrons is negligible. The importance of atomic numbers and mass is simple, the atoms of each element has a specific atomic. Number and mass each determined by adding or subtracting protons and neutrons within the atom. How is a decision problem connected to algorithms? A decision problem is also known as an Entscheidungsproblem, which stems from the German. Decision problems bring up the question of whether an algorithm represents a specific mathematical assertion or not. As well as whether it has or does not have a proof. Who first introduced Arabic notation and the concept of zero to Europe? Italian mathematician Leonardo of Pisa, c. 1170 c. 1250, who was also known as Fibonacci, or son of Bonaxi, although some historians say there is no evidence that he or his contemporaries ever used that name. Brought the idea of Arabic notation and the concept of zero to Europe. His book Liberabasi, the book of the abacus. Not only introduced zero but also the arithmetic and algebra he had learned in Arab countries. Another book. Liber Quadratorum, the Book of the Square, was the first major European advance in number theory in a thousand years. He is also responsible for presenting the Fibonacci sequence. For more information about Fibonacci and the Fibonacci sequence, see Math Basics. What is an improper integral?
an integral as seen above means that the function f, x, needs to be bounded on the interval a. b, both real numbers, and the interval also must be bounded. But an improper integral is one in which the function f, x, becomes unbounded. Called a type i improper integral, or the interval a, b becomes unbounded. A equals OO or B equals plus OO, which is called a type 2 improper integral. What is accuracy in measurement? Accuracy in measurement is based on relative error and number of significant digits. Relative error is the absolute error divided by the calculated, or estimated, value. For example, if a person expects to spend $10 per week at the local espresso bar, but he or she actually spends $12.50, the absolute error is 12.50 10.00 equals 2.50, the relative error then becomes 2.50 slash 10, equals 0 0.25, to find out the percent, multiply by 100, or 0 0.25 x 100 equals 25% of the original estimate. Significant digits refers to a certain decimal place that determines the amount of rounding off to take place in the measurement. In most cases, this means that there are more numbers to the right of the decimal point. But beware. Accuracy in measurement does not mean the actual measurement taken was accurate. It only means that if there are a large number of significant digits, or if the relative error is low, the measurement is more accurate. How do numbers associate with each other? Generally in mathematics, there are certain properties of operations that determine how numbers associate with each other. Closure is a property of an operation that reveals how numbers associate with each other. In particular, when two whole numbers are added, their sum will be a whole number. Closure as a property of multiplication occurs when two whole numbers are multiplied and their resulting product is a whole number. An associative property means that for a given operation that combines three quantities, two at a time, the initial pairing of the quantities is arbitrary. For example, when doing an addition operation, the numbers can be combined in two ways, a plus b, plus c equals a plus, b plus c. Thus, when adding the numbers 3, 4, and 5, this means that they may be combined as 3 plus 4, plus 5 equals 12 or 3 plus, 4 plus 5, equals 12. Following the same logic for multiplication. The associative law states that, AXB, XC equals AX, BXC. In fact, in an associative operation, the parentheses that indicate what quantities are to be first combined can be omitted. An example of the associative law for addition is 3 plus 4 plus 5 equals 12, and for multiplication. 2x3x4 equals 24. But not all operations are associative. 
One good example is division, you can't divide in the same way as you added or multiplied above. For example, the result of dividing three numbers differs. The operation, 960204 equals 2 is not the same as 960204 equals 32. Like the associative property. The commutative property is another way of looking at how numbers associate with each other in operations. In particular, this law holds that for a given operation that combines two quantities. The order of the quantities is arbitrary. For example, in addition, adding 4 plus 5 can be written either as 4 plus 5 equals 9 or 5 plus 4 equals 9. Or expressed as A plus B equals B plus A. When working on a multiplication operation, the same rule applies, as in AXB equals BXA. Again, not all operations are commutative. For example, subtraction is not, as in the equation 6 3 equals 3. Which is not the same as 3 6 equals minus 3. Division also is not commutative. For instance 603 equals 2 is not the same as 306 equals 1 half. The final property of an operation is the distributive property. In this rule, for any two operations the first is distributive over the second. For example, multiplication is distributive over addition. For any numbers a, b, and c, ax, b plus c, equals, axb, plus, axc. For the numbers 2, 3, and 4, you would have 2x, 3 plus 4, equals 14 or, 2x3, plus, 2x4, equals 14. Formally. There is a right and left distribution left is listed above, right is, a plus xc equals, axc, plus, bxc. In most cases, both are commonly referred to as distributivity. Again, not all operations are distributive. For example, addition is not distributive over multiplication, as in a plus, b x c, asterisk, a and b, x, a and c. What is trigonometry? Trigonometry is the study of how the sides and angles of a triangle are related to each other. Interestingly, the angles are usually measured in terms of a circle around the x and y axes, from there. Certain formulas are calculated, much as they are in algebra, to determine all the angles and units. Because trigonometry is such a mix of algebra and geometry. It is often considered the art of doing algebra over a circle. Although trig, as it is nicknamed, is a small part of geometry, it has numerous applications in fields such as astronomy. Surveying, maritime and aerial navigation, and engineering. <laughs>